Hello everyone. Three clergymen were jointly owned a lottery ticket. They won the grand total of a whopping million pounds. The question was, how much do they keep for themselves and how much should you give to God? Now after a few minutes, the Baptist minister said, I know we'll draw a circle and throw the money up in the air. And whatever lands out of the circuit we'll keep and whatever lands in the circle we'll give to God. The priest pipes up and says, you'll know it's a little windy. I think we should throw the money up in the air and whatever lands inside the circle we keep, whatever lands outside the circle we give to God. No, said the rabbi. I think we should throw the money up in the air and whatever stays up there is God's and whatever comes down is ours. Now in today's Gospel, Jesus tells us to be on our guard against avarice of any kind. We might be tempted to let ourselves off the hook though and think that this only applies to the super rich and not to us. The Bible teaches that the love of money is the root of all evil and an old Roman adage says, Our fondness for money is like salt water. The more you drink, the thirstier you get. The great playwright Henry Gibson said, Money can bring you the husk of many things, but not the kernel. It can bring you delicious food, but not appetite. Medicine, but not health. Acquaintances, but not friends. Days of happiness, but not lasting peace. Jesus said, A man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he's got more than enough. The avarice which Jesus condemns is that which puts profit before people or when we gauge a person's worth by the size of their bank balance. We can also, in this context, expl exploit people for financial gain. People become expendable and their dignity is trampled on. We are rightly shocked when we hear about child bonded labour working in sweatshops for a pittance in faraway places. Nearer to home, though, we hear about people, especially from Eastern Europe, who work long illegal hours with little or no time break. Avarice has hardened the employer's heart to such an extent that he or she has no conscience about exploiting these vulnerable people. According to a programme I was looking on BBC recently, Worldwide, more than 45 million people are living in modern slavery. Figures suggest there could be 10,000 or even up to 13,000 victims of slavery in this country trafficked from countries like Albania or Vietnam. About 3,000 people, children from Vietnam alone are thought to be working here in cannabis farms and nail bars Someone in Doncaster told me last week that she knows of migrants working long hours at a nearby car wash for a mere £20 a day. The Gospel would demand that we do something about it. St Paul reminds us today, you must kill everything in you that belongs to this earthly life, especially greed, which is akin to worshipping a false god. The paybacks may be lucrative, in this life for such exploitation but we're hardly on the straight and narrow road which leads to life eternal thank you all very much for listening god bless you all